Hello everyone and thank you very much for tuning in and welcome to our second webinar of 2017 sponsored by the Pacific Northwest Aquatic Monitoring Partnership, also known as PNAMP. This webinar is an introduction to the map viewer in MR.org or monitoringresources.org. But a quick announcement first, the topic of our next webinar on May 18th is how to document methods and protocols. All of our webinars are recorded and posted on monitoringresources.org in the Learn section under Videos, and I'll show you where that is shortly. But our first webinar that Becca Scully led last month was an introduction to monitoringresources.org. So if you need an introduction, you can go to monitoringresources.org and see our first video. So today the goals are to introduce you to one of the applications in Monitoring Resources. Monitoring Resources is a suite of online applications that support research and monitoring design and collaborative sharing of metadata. The apps are interactive, so we call them web tools, and they're all free to use. And today we're focusing on our map viewer, but I'll mention some of the other applications again. So our major goal today is to use Monitoring Explorer to view maps with monitoring sites and programs in them. You can discover those monitoring sites and programs. <coughs> and you can discover data collection events and their locations and some detail about them. You can also link to programs, methods for data collection events, metadata about how they collected the data. So these are our goals today. So can anyone afford to independently collect and manage and analyze and archive all the information they need? Not likely. But how to get information they need if the goal is to gather enough scientifically sound information to adequately assess results and make sound decisions about future work? Well, it takes an infrastructure to support collaboration and coordination of monitoring data. And building infrastructure requires standardization and organizational communication both within an organization and among organizations using cooperative collaboration. So can anyone put all this together in one package? Uh, it is difficult and infrastructure supports good data stewardship which has technical solutions but it must also be a socio-cultural choice for organizations. So to meet our long-term objectives, such as coordination, creating efficiencies, producing timely and transparent products, PNAMP is here to help. And this is where we come in. PNAMP mission is to produce an effective, comprehensive network of monitoring programs in the Pacific Northwest that can produce sound science to inform public policy and resource management decisions. PNAP has about 19 signatory partners and over 100 participant organizations in our programs. Our programs include leading and planning workshops, participating in conferences, and PNAP sponsors this webinar series and the subject of today's webinar. We sponsor the monitoringresources.org. It's a metadata database. These are an integrated set of online tools. And the purpose is to promote and support clear, standardized documentation of data collection methods and study designs using consistent terminology and online tools. So this infrastructure is to share information and to assist with people managing their data. There is a data ma management life cycle. And monitoringresources.org supports the creation of robust metadata. And our tools focus on mainly four of these stages, planning, acquiring, publishing, and sharing. 
by providing a standardized process for planning and designing monitoring so that everyone has comparable data. And today, we're focusing on descriptions of their metadata in a map and on sharing that metadata. So in general, map viewers allow one to ask questions and find answers about what, where, and when at a minimum, and ideally who and how they're doing it. Sometimes you can discover why the impetus and the importance of collecting and displaying those data. Our map viewer looks like this. It's a standard geographical information systems interface, but it is free to use and it's available online. And these are maps that can show subsets of meaningful metadata about specific data collection events. This can be useful for long-term studies, new users to the systems and the organizations that they work for, and especially for collaboration and sharing the discovery of data collection events. So having better and accurate location information results in data discovery that's accurate. And that can result in more precise analyses and better management prescriptions. While there are several steps to the process of designing and conducting studies and monitoring programs, we're concentrating today on the discovery portion here. Discovery is an important step for collaboration and coordination. Different organizations need to know who is sampling what, where, when, and how to better understand how their data and their work can contribute to a larger picture perhaps a multi-scalar approach, and we might want to find other people's data for our analyses. For example, we might want to find water quality and habitat data in the same location where we collected fish population data. So we need a tool to support our ability to find such information. So the key to monitoring resources map viewer is that we can view multiple programs locations of data collection event information on one map in standard GIS layers that are downloadable. You can download information about fish, certain fish layers, and I'll show you those in a moment. And you can combine those with temperature data or water quality data. At the moment we have six programs in our system and you can see that they're all doing work, some of them in real similar places. And you can see all of them at the same time, or some of them. So you can see multiple program sites on the same map. So I'll demonstrate a little bit about the map viewer, but first I wanted to show you a little bit about monitoringresources.org, just orient you to the program if you haven't used it before and if you haven't signed in before. This is our home page, and our home page has several ways to get around. This is um, our menu at the top, and I recommend, if you haven't been here before, to go straight to the Learn item. And the Learn item has several ways to get you started. And probably the first thing I would do is take a look at about monitoringresources.org. This brings you to a page, which is what we do, and why, and how we do it here also the intended audience, whether this would work for you or for a colleague of yours. The next thing to look at would be training videos. We're building a little library of training videos and now if you need to know how to create a new user account, you can do that with this training video. And as I mentioned before, Becca Scully gave an introduction to monitoring resources and the recording of her seminar is here. Also frequently asked questions. It's a pretty good library of questions that we have built. You can find out quite a lot about monitoringresources.org. And in here, you can find some how-to information, how to create some content. And also there's a glossary. This is a crucial element of monitoringresources.org. And that's because we can all speak a common language if we're using similar terms for metadata and describing our data. 
So if we want to get to Monitoring Explorer Map Viewer, first of all, we call it Monitoring Explorer because it's not just a static map that you're looking at. It's interactive. You can explore items and layers in the map. So it does a little more than just uh, showing you a map. You would choose Explore, Explorer. You can also get to it by choosing Find and Monitoring Explorer. And this is the home page for Monitoring Explorer and the Map Viewer. And what we have here on the left side is a site search that I will get back to because that will narrow uh, what you're trying to find by certain filters and criteria. And then we have a standard toolbar. It's similar to a GIS toolbar, a little bit simplified, and I'll go through what each of those do. We also have layers here, and these are the key to our map viewer, layers that you can use together or in pieces. So I'm collapsing the site search at the moment, and I collapsed all of our layers and this shows you just our map. You can go full screen with a map if you need to um, look at a full screen map. Right here, this is a toggle that will toggle you to full screen and then toggle back. Full extent, in our case, full extent is the Pacific Northwest and that is the extent of our map at the moment. We are expanding to other areas around the country and um, if you are interested in including your sites, please let us know. We, we do that. And a zoom into extent works by drawing a box around where you want to zoom to. So if I want to zoom to Olympia area, I can do that. Um, similarly, zoom out from extent works in the same way. Preview ex extent is a, it's a back button for a map, so it brings you back to the extent you were in, and a forward button to the extent here, and a pan. This is a standard pan to move the map around in the viewing window. And this is a great little tool. Identify identifies a point on the map or a line on the map, and it gives you a lot more information about that point line, and there are links to different pieces of metadata that I'll show you in a bit here. The measuring tool is a standard measuring tool. You're able to measure area, length. In this case, I measured distance between two sites that are from two different programs. They're eight kilometers apart. They're in tributaries, I believe, to the John Day River. And you can change the units here. These are degrees. You can change the base map if you like. We have a library of base maps here, too. So that's our sidebar menu and then we have layers and when you expand layers you can choose different programs these are programs I've chosen to I've chosen Oregon Department of Environmental Quality here and the pack fish in fish biological opinion that's managed by the Forest Service those are points those are monitoring sites and then I've chosen a steelhead major population group. Those are polygons here, and that's what the names are, the names of major population groups. So while you can choose all the layers, if you did that, you would probably be interested in some subset of these, or you may want to look point by point at a couple of these different sites, data collection sites, and data collection events. So. We have ways to narrow your search. You can choose survey types. If I am simply interested, say, in macroinvertebrates, I can turn that on. Do a search and see just macroinvertebrates out of everybody that's working with all the aquatic monitoring in the region. There are, for instance, in our layers, um, restoration sites where people are restoring aquatic and riparian zones. The Pinship is the Pacific Northwest Salmonid Habitat Project. And there's a question mark here. Note the question mark where you can choose that. And when you do, 
you get a choice of types of locations and you can turn these, these on or off. If you simply want to look at riparian habitat, you can do that. Or you can look at riparian habitat and in-stream habitat. And then, let's say you do turn on one of those little features. And when you choose this information button and you choose this site, this is what pops up. This is the information box that pops up with the location, lat long, when anything was last recorded about that location, and some metadata about that. CHAMP, by the way, it's the Columbia Habitat Monitoring Program. So the power of this system is looking at several different programs. If you were to start a new program, then you would likely want to know who has done what, where, um, and what types of things they were working on here. And you could narrow it down to, well, you know, I really need to work right near Albany. I'll choose this site. What are they doing near Albany? This um, action effectiveness monitoring site, you can click for more information about what happened here. But what if you want to know exactly what happened? This will come up and show you that this site was visited, this AEM site, was visited um, three times. And something to note here, the organization that is doing the monitoring is the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs. The monitoring program is CHAMP. Protocol is a scientific protocol, how this was done. I'll show you that in a second. And there is a data repository. And an important note here, monitoring resources does not house data. We house metadata. But throughout monitoringresources.org, there are links to data repositories. So you can find the data, and you can find who collected it. When I click on the protocol, let's, let me show you this protocol right here. If I click on this, I end up with a protocol that is housed in monitoringresources.org. These protocols are standardized and have a list of methods. Basics and objectives are an abstract that tells the why of the program. The objectives tell the objectives of that particular protocol. There may be many protocols for a given program. There's a little bit about the study design, location, spatial um, information, and temporal information. And then there's a lot of other information about how these monitoring programs are conducted, but some of the most important information are the methods that are listed in a protocol. These methods also are linked to metrics and indicators that the practitioner defines. These methods are here so that if anyone wants to replicate, or even if a given organization wants to replicate a study, they could take these methods into the field. They can print them as a field manual, and they would be able to replicate and reproduce that monitoring design or study. So what if you're interested in just a few sites? Say you want to work near Warm Springs, near the Warm Springs Reservation. Some of our site search criteria are locations. And you can choose locations by attributes such as county, state, but you can also draw a freeform bounding box around a given area. After you do that, to select those and use those sites in the future, you scroll down, you search, and then you find seven sites in this bounding box. If you click grid, you can see these. You can download these as a CSV file. Another thing you can do is a site search based on types of surveys. Now these drop-down boxes give you a lot of different choices. If I wanted to look at vegetation, disturbance, and say macroinvertebrates, I would add each one in turn. And I would have my list. And again, I would search. And then we found this many sites. This was out of two programs that I had selected. So there are 1,062 sites 
found, and if I want to keep those, you see they're in pink. If I want to keep those, I can do that. I can share criteria. And I get a URL where I can come back to this. I can email this to my colleagues. I could email it to myself. And I can also click on grid. And the grid here, I can see my CSV file. Here's where I can download it as a CSV. There's some attributes here. So one more thing I want to show you about these layers. You notice there's a little eye information icon about some of these layers. I have a Huck layer turned on here. I have Steelhead major population group turned on here. If I choose that information icon, I go to an external site that has more metadata. This is a data set for the major population group boundaries from Sitka's geospatial data portal. There's metadata, there are attributes about the major population group for steelhead. There's another map, but also I can download either or both. I can download an Esri geodatabase file set or a shape file set. And that was the steelhead major population group metadata. So, power of looking at many different programs on one map at the same time and being able to select attributes from those programs. Here, so how do we get these sites in here? The first question we get, but that depends on you, that depends on your participation. We encourage your participation and how we actually enter sites will be covered in our webinar on June 15th which is adding sites in Sample Designer. And another way we can make this happen is by speaking a common language. It takes some standardization. And we have built a monitoring metadata exchange template. It's a data exchange standard that we use to automate feeds from partners. So we can use online application programming interfaces. It's a template for how to share the where, what, when, and how of data collection events. So there are two ways to get data into the map. One is a guided point click in our sample designer. This is the reporting phase of data collection events. And there are many ways we can use these MMX templates. We have implemented two of them. This is one, and this is another. We use application programming interfaces to exchange information between data repositories. We can send you application programming interface code. Hopefully we can share information in that way, in an automated way. And the results of speaking this common language and having these data exchange standards is that we can share data and we facilitate discovery of common data. I'll talk a little bit about Map Viewer and how it integrates to the rest of monitoringresources.org because it doesn't stand alone. It integrates, as you saw, with different pieces of monitoring resources and even with partners, data repositories. So first of all, the Map Viewer integrates with monitoring resources. We saw we could pull up organizations and some programs and some data repositories, but monitoring resources has a list of many, many other organizations and programs and data repositories in it that you can explore. The Map Viewer also interfaces with design documentation. Our webinar on June 15th will discuss designing, planning, and managing sample sites, how we change our data collection location information after you visited the sites. And then the Map Viewer interfaces with protocols, and protocols are the why and the how of what the data collection events are there, and it is detailed metadata, including detailed methods. And in this way, you can set up an integrated data management plan. We have the where and when on our map viewer, but also who, what, and how is all part of monitoring resources. Our very last webinar in August will be explaining how to use the integration of the tools. So we have overarching goals at PNAMP here and for monitoringresources.org and you can see that we want to ensure that there are infrastructures that can support the sharing of information among organizations and their systems. 
especially discovery of where and when and who is working on projects, because that's a really important step toward effective collaboration and data sharing. And with that, I will close and announce our next webinar again. It is about documenting methods and protocols, and we have announcements about all of our webinars at the pnap.org site. I would like to say that these webinars are a team effort, and a big thank you to Megan Sam, who are producing. Right now, they're in the sound booth managing many technical aspects, and earlier they managed much logistics and communication. And a big thanks to Becca Scully, who developed most of the content for all of our webinars. And we have Jen Bear and Amy Pools, who helped with earlier versions of this webinar. They're all here with us today. So if I can't answer your questions, then someone here can. And if you have comments, we'd love to hear them.